But even as the former president has defended himself in this case, he's taken swings at the special counsel overseeing separate federal investigations into him because, according to multiple sources who've spoken with CNN, it's the probe into the former president's potential mishandling of classified documents that particularly concerns his inner circle. My next two guests understand better than most why we now have a Presidential Records Act, which was enacted after the Watergate scandal. Journalist Carl Bernstein is the author of Chasing History, a kid in the newsroom, and senior contributor John Dean, former White House counsel to Richard Nixon. So, Carl, what does it say to you that, among other laws, the Presidential Records Act is looming so large over the former president's legal fate? Well, it has all along because, among other things, the president of the United States, and as he was leaving the presidency, uh, seems to have directed the illegal movement of these documents at Mar-a-Lago. But I want to take a little bit of an issue uh, in the following way with what you said. His lawyers may think that this is the primary vulnerability, uh, but in fact, he has three locomotives bearing down on him, former President Trump, legally, and probably the most serious is the January 6th insurrection that the special counsel is looking at. And that investigation is premised on the huge volumes of fact uh, about the insurrection, about Trump's role in seditiously trying to stop the tr peaceful transfer of power to the next president of the United States. That case itself, there is a record, like the Senate Watergate Committee developed a record that led to the uh, impeachment uh, and the likely uh, conviction in the Senate and eventual resignation of Richard Nixon, the January 6th committee has established almost a slam dunk record that is so damning in terms of Trump's legal vulnerability uh, that that's really the ones, uh, and the special counsel is investigating it, that's really the ones that most of the lawyers I talk to think is really potentially fatal for Trump. John, as a former White House counsel, how big a deal of it, it, it deal is it that the former president's own lawyer is being compelled to testify in the documents case? It's a big deal because, first of all, lawyers are pretty good witnesses, uh, which is something that's painful when they're testifying against you. And the fact that his privilege didn't hold and a judge found at least a prima facie basis that there was a cr criminal act being portrayed between the two of them, either unknowingly by Trump on the lawyer or maybe the lawyer was involved. We don't think so at this point, but we don't know. So this is a problem for him. And the documents case, I think, is very serious because they're looking for obstruction of justice and they've uh, got probable cause to get a subpoena to go in to Mar-a-Lago and seize documents, if you will. Uh, and that's a case that is shown a judge already that there's a case there, a criminal activity of some sort. So that's why I think they're worried. And Carl, uh, Jack Smith, as you talked about, I mean, he's not just investigating the, the documents case, also the efforts to, to overturn the, the January 6th, uh, or, or the efforts to overturn the election in January 6th. He, he subpoenaed a number of people in the former president's inner circle, former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, former Vice President Mike Pence. Their testimony is... I mean, especially Meadows, his testimony is potentially explosive. As well as the same lawyers that we're talking about in the documents case have also uh, are being compelled to testify in the January 6th insurrection case. And you also have a grand jury in Georgia with a very damning series of, of facts that shows in a telephone call that was recorded that Donald Trump, while president of the United States, said to the secretary of state in Florida, find me 11,000 votes. And the intimidation of a secretary of state to bring about a, a, a faulty election. Uh, intimidation, that's the other case. So these locomotives are all bearing down on him at once. But meanwhile, he and his lawyers are losing in their motions, case after case after case, the attempt to cite privileges. Now even the lawyers are being forced to compel and being compelled to tell what they know before the special counsel and his grand jury. So this, what we saw in New York this week is just the beginning. And what we're going to see through the next year is a, a whole litany of terrible, corruptive facts about Donald Trump and his conduct of office and attempt to stop the legal transfer of power 
to his successor who was duly elected. This is not about the big lie. This is about Trump trying to stage a coup and stay in office in a way that no president of the United States has refused to let the orderly transfer of power take place, yeah. as Trump has done. And the facts are there through that January 6th committee. And John, Keep your I, eye on that. John, I mean, it's incredible the, the extent to which the former president just continues to go after the people who are investigating him. Jack Smith, he called a totally biased thug on Tuesday night, um, obviously going after the, the judge in the case in New York, talking about the judge's wife, the judge's daughter. It, it's true. He likes to belittle the process. That's part of He plays politics and doesn't follow the rules that uh, prosecutors and judges are forced to follow, where they can't respond to most of these charges he makes. And it's very difficult for a judge, say this judge warned in New York, he warned uh, tr Trump's lawyers and Trump was right there listening to it. But the problem is, Anderson, there's really little ways to enforce it. He, he, it's not likely he can bring Trump in and put him in jail, particularly for the offenses thus far. If Trump did something horrendous, he might, but it's just very remote. Yeah. So judges have great difficulty enforcing this sort of gag and keeping people behaving. Yeah, John Dean, Carl Bernstein, I appreciate it tonight. Thank you.